I, I, I think that we're seeing a lot more mainstream business finding reasons to adopt AI for regular product lines. So I, I think that while there's been a lot of focus on the big companies who are the first movers on this, and, and while they will maintain a lot of research momentum, obviously, uh, I think we'll see AI moving out more into companies where it would not have been expected. Um, we're seeing now, of course, a lot in healthcare, but also in transportation. Uh, and probably a way that this is happening is that a lot of what we look at in terms of machine learning is moving out into hardware, and especially onto low power hardware. So for instance, if you're a company that has trucks that go out on service calls, uh, we're seeing more and more embedded devices going along with those trucks. They collect data, they can provide a lot of information out in the field, uh, and having machine learning in those kind of low power devices means that we can handle a lot higher data rates out on, the, out on the edge, out in the real world, as opposed to, say, having to bring all that data back up into the cloud, process it, and send it back out. So when you take into account how much mainstream business there is like that, you know, whether it's plumbers or electricians or somebody repairing, I don't know, a, a building, I think that the numbers are much, much larger than what we're seeing currently with the, the early applications. Um, I mean, obviously, finance is incredibly sophisticated in this area because they've been working as data companies for decades. And so they were really aligned to be able to leverage a lot of machine learning early, and it fits very well with a lot of the needs in finance. Um, but as it moves out into, like I say, transportation, energy, manufacturing, construction, uh, a lot of areas that aren't quite as intuitive about the use cases, um, I think that'll be the big change. Do you think we are at the peak of many expectations? And in the next AI is coming? Interesting. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I definitely lived through the AI winter. I, I had done work in grad school, and then that happened. I had to go into other kinds of work. Um, but that was decades ago. I think that the big problem that's looming right now is that a lot of companies experience tech debt uh, in terms of how they manage data or collect data. And if they don't get rid of that, they're not in position to be able to adopt a lot of the machine learning kinds of work that their competitors are adopting. So what I see as kind of the next AI winter is not so much AI goes away, but actually a large part of enterprise is at risk probably becoming acquisitions. Uh, and we're already seeing this now with a lot of notable acquisitions happening, with some companies getting into trillion dollar scale for market cap. I think we'll see a lot more of that. Um, and again, it, it really comes down to the kind of preparedness that they have currently. How do you think about Data Spain? Oh, I love it. Uh, I really love Big Data Spain. This is, I believe, my sixth year coming back since 2013. I love Madrid, I, it's just such an amazing city. I feel so comfortable as soon as I get here. Um, Big Data Spain to me gives me like a bird's eye view of what's happening, and not just in Europe, but across the world. Um, it's amazing, people have flown in from all over. The kinds of use cases that we're seeing here, it's very diverse, um, and it has a nice balance between the technology side and the business side, which is very hard to find. Uh, so I, I, I love, I love coming to Spain, I, I love the people, the food, everything, of course, but Big Data Spain itself is a very special kind of event, and it's wonderful how it's grown over the years, I look forward to seeing much more.